Yeah, when I took over this job um, eight years ago, um, what I saw was um, America being challenged with the issue of uh, race. Uh, the Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida. Florida is my home state originally. Um, and then uh, the Ferguson um, uh, incident occurred. And I, I found myself saying and in, in looking at television and watching and seeing the mayor uh, struggling with how he wanted to bring the community together and how he was struggling with what to say and what to do. So I got with my team and created um, an initiative called Race, Equity, and Leadership. And the race part was about what we were dealing with. The leadership and equity piece was about the elected officials having the skills and the knowledge to be able to address these types of tension when they occur, if they occur, in their community. And so REAL over the last five years has developed a number of tools, tools that have been um, used to train municipal officials uh, when uh, racial tension occurs, uh, tools that will help them to be able to deal with the equity issues related to uh, funding challenges in their community, looking at their practices and programs with a racial lens, and also, again, engaging the philanthropic as well as the corporate community in this type of work. And I think that what REAL has truly been able to do is open the eyes of municipal officials as they do their job of leading diverse or non-diverse communities. How do they lead in a respectful, inclusive manner? And we're very proud of the five years uh, that uh, we've been uh, providing the service. However, I will tell you, in today's time, the work of REAL uh, has to be expanded uh, because what has happened in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd, um, we can go on and on and on throughout America that this is the time that real, really is important and we are going to need partnership with corporate America as well as the philanthropic and community activist community. If we don't get that partnership, we will not have the success that we need to have in this area. And uh, we won't see uh, the economic growth in, in our community. We can't let this opportunity pass. Mike, we got to create a program or initiative that is sustainable, not for the next incident that's happened, but we just need to do something that is at least a five, 10 year parameter. And that's what the National League of Cities is committed to uh, when we are working on this work related to real. Yeah, the decision um, in terms of the budgeting process in local government um, is, is based upon the same thing I think uh, uh, corporate America does. And I don't think a lot of people recognize that these are CEOs of cities. And so you got to look at your, your revenues and your expenses and your additional services that you can uh, make money off of, the water and sewer systems to, again, continue to fund uh, all of those needs. Um, and I think what has happened um, is sometimes um, we fund those things that are uh, that are the most active and loudest uh, requesters of money um, and not fund those uh, communities that are lacking uh, for a voice. And as a former mayor, I can tell you that was a challenge. Uh, those leaders that came 
uh, and came to the podium at a city council meeting and screamed about uh, needing uh, their roads paved or more parks in their community and they had political power um, that was funded because they were the loudest. I think as we move forward in 2020 and beyond, um, we're going to need to use data to make decisions and make sure the data shows us that um, the need is in the Northwest and not the Northeast because it shows that through data that these roads and infrastructure have not been improved in 20 years and these others were improved in, in it was 15 years ago. That the leakage in the water and infrastructure system in this part of town, you can look at the, the waste and the data and it shows that it's just flooding in areas. And this area is not, even though that road may not be uh, paved as well, we got potholes, this area really needs to work right now. So if we look at the data, I'm hopeful that what we'll start doing is funding the gaps that are in those areas. And that's what the, the new lens of funding should be about. Let's use data, let's fund the issues and the challenges that exist in our communities uh, throughout America. And a lot of those are um, communities of color. And that's where that racial disparity uh, shows up. Um, Mike, I'll tell you this. I watched where um, there was a policy that was um, changed at the federal level. And it, 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 it was an executive order that took away the requirement to do environmental assessments of projects, federal projects. So in essence, what that people may say is that, oh, that's going to hurt climate change or that's going to hurt um, resilience and sustainability. Let me tell you what it hurt. The history of that environmental assessment program was because we used to cite incinerators, waste facilities, train tracks, um, all types of factories in the black neighborhood historically. And so this policy was developed so that you do these assessments and determine whether or not it's going to have a negative impact on these communities. And to, to disband this order of these type of assessments, what it's done is it's allowing those types of facilities to be cited again without an environmental assessment. That's disparity. That's a true example of how um, public policy and practice can have a significant impact on a community.